Gil, how are you? Nice to see you. Welcome back. It's good to see you. You're with Lamico. Tell us a little bit about your company. First of all, we'll start with your symbol and the exchange that you're on, and then we'll, we'll dig down into the details because you've got some exciting news. Yeah, Lamico Metals trades on the TSX Venture under the symbol LMR and on the OTC QB uh, under the symbol LMRMF. And you've had a bit of uh, activity on your stock lately. What's going on? Yeah, we've started to drill on our property in Quebec, which is uh, the most exciting time for any company to, to add value to the property. So we've uh, been drilling for the last three weeks and we, we've coming, we're coming up to results. So, and uh, tell us what you're looking for because there are people who haven't seen you, haven't met you before. So what, what are you going after and uh, what are you expecting to find on this property? Yeah, we're involved in the electric vehicle battery materials industry. Uh, so what we're looking for specifically is uh, the material flake graphite, which is used in the anode of a uh, electric vehicle battery. So it's a very important uh, aspect. It cannot be economically replaced. The only other good replacement is lead or gold, and no one's going to use either of those in a battery. <laughs> so uh, we, we think that we're uh, uh, on to something in our Quebec property. In 2016 and 17, we drilled the property and came up with um, some very good results. And the tantalizing uh, result right at the end was a 110 meter hole of 14.5%, which is um, compared to the operating mine that's near us, double the grade. But we couldn't uh, drill anymore. That was the end of our permit. So mm. now we're drilling again, and we're of course focusing on that area and stepping out every 50 meters each way to find uh, uh, more and more of that high-grade material. So what we do know now is we've already intercepted um, uh, lengths of 60, 70, and 80 meters around the actual uh, very high-grade hole. So that's very exciting news for us. Those are pretty positive results at this point. So let's go back just a step further. What was it initially about this site that made you say, we believe that this is a, a rich uh, environment to explore in? Yeah, the, the, the main thing that we saw was that there is a, a mine north of us, about 53 kilometers, called Immerus Carbon Graphite. And it obviously, in, in you know, mineral trends run for hundreds of kilometers. Mm -hmm. And so you just have to find a good at surface location and you'll find some good min mineralization. So immediately around us to the, to the uh, southwest is Northern Graphite, which is now has an offtake agreement and a, an agreement with a Chinese company to supply graphite. To the northeast is Nouveau Monde, uh, which has an offtake agreement uh, for 25,000 tons of material with another group. And to the north of us is a mine. So we're, we're in a it perfect is location. Yeah. It's a completely operating. So yeah. we found this particular location um, a few years ago because it had so much at surface mineralization. So we were hoping to add uh, some real depth to that and define a, a very, very nice high grade. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sorry, a, a high grade. Yeah. Uh, Keep battery. it down over there, yeah. <laughs> a high grade body there, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and one of the other benefits, of course, of being in such an active mining area is, of course, infrastructure is pretty much in place, isn't it? Yeah, it's very important to have a port that's nearby. Uh, a port, uh, the Port of Montreal, international port, uh, less than an hour and a half away from the property. Um, we have roads ac accessing the property. Um, we have water and power in the area. So it's, it's perfect because it's not very populated there. It's, uh, in fact, we have to watch out for uh, people doing hunting and snowmobiling because uh, it's in the backwoods, really. Mm -hmm. But other than that, um, uh, we're, we're in a perfect location to develop a, a, a mining operation, and Quebec is one of the best jurisdictions on Earth. You anticipated my next question. For a lot of people, they may not know much about Quebec as a mining jurisdiction. Tell us a little bit about what it's like as far as its uh, welcoming that for, for, for mining and history. Yeah, I think there's, a, there's of course, a, a, a lot of support in the Ministry of Mines. They've, they've really fast-tracked projects. 
Um, they have uh, First Nations groups that will work with you in order to develop uh, the project. And they have uh, knowledgeable people in the area that know that mines create jobs. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, uh, that's the main thing is that uh, the people want to be employed there. They know they have a, a rich history of mining in gold uh, with a Valdor trend and everything, but uh, they understand uh, what's going on there. And, and you compare it to some other jurisdictions, um, really, I mean, the other jurisdictions graphite is found in is Madagascar, Sri Lanka, <laughs> right. Africa. You just don't want to be in these places when you're putting together a 20-year mine. It's just right. not the right way to go. I mean, you need to be in Canada where there's a stable government, stable jurisdiction, and there's safety. So you touched on uh, First Nations uh, relations in the area. Um, we don't hear that there is the tension uh, in Quebec the same way as there might be in, in other jurisdictions. What is it about the way that uh, those relationships, those community relationships with First Nations and Indigenous peoples in the area have helped to ensure that there's like that ongoing stability uh, with mining? Well, I think it's, uh, the fact that, uh, is that wealth creation has been shared. Yeah. And, and p jobs have been created for everyone. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's, that's the most important part. Um, the communities have been developed. It's gone on for a long period of time. And I think that even other jurisdictions could learn from the fact that if you have a continual um, support of a particular industry, you're going to create a lot of good feelings around people, uh, in people, because they create well-paying jobs. There is no well-paying jobs being created anywhere else in Canada. I mean, really, you look at all the retail sector, it's not well-paying jobs. Mm -hmm. Mining creates well-paying jobs, and that's the main um, thrust of, of what uh, the Quebec government understands and what we understand. Right, and I also think that it's fundamentally important that uh, if you are uh, developing what is, in essence, one of the minerals that is required for a green economy, which is all of us looking to ensure that we have the, the healthiest and the best possible living and working environment, you also have to, part of that commitment has to be your relationship within the communities that you're functioning in. Yeah, it has to be a whole, whole uh, project. Holistic, yes. Holistic, essentially. Yes. Um, you have to say what you mean and do what you mean. And I think that's what uh, we're able to do because I think Quebec has a, has a future here in the electric vehicle industry because they have a, a large trend of lithium, uh, which can be converted, hard rock lithium that can be converted to lithium oxide, mm -hmm. uh, hydroxide, sorry, uh, lithium hydroxide, yep. and uh, the graphite, which is one of the other key materials, and, uh, and lots of rare earths as well. So I think the... Um, the, the industry can grow in that particular location. So you're just wrapping up uh, current drilling now. Uh, you expect results when? Uh, our results should be out by the middle of uh, March. And uh, right now we're wrapping up the drilling program. It's, it's pretty much completed at this point. So we know that we have those intercepts um, on the property around a very high grade hole. We don't know what the grades of those particular intercepts are yet, mm -hmm. but um, I think it's pretty good. Uh, indication that they're around a, a very high grade area so we're really happy with the results so far we'll mm -hmm. see what the the details tell us and then next is the resource okay let's assume that you get positive results where do you go from there what are your next steps well the main thing to uh, understand about uh, the graphite itself is that it's not just the results in the ground you have to look at the metallurgy to see how you can recover the material mm -hmm. which we have uh, we have good uh, recovery. We also have to look at the carbon content of the mineral as well and the flake size because flake size also adds value. So there's all these things to consider mm -hmm. and so there's a, a few other tests to go through but I think we're on the right track and uh, initial results indicate that we have the metallurgy recovering uh, potential and the flake size. So uh, now that we have a, I think an upgraded resource uh, we're, we're going to, to put that into the books and then go on and do a pre-economic assessment, which is the main uh, focus of any mining company because it, it essentially gives you something that you can put on your, your, your audited financial statement and say this is the value of the company. Mm -hmm. And obviously we're going for something much larger than our five million market cap. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we're hopefully going to produce some value there. and that's, uh, 
Um, you know, when you look at uh, the kinds of projects that are around us, they're all 150, 200 million dollar projects, whereas uh, our project is, has, has zero value right now because it hasn't got a PEA. So once that yeah, PEA yeah. is done, we'll add a lot of value. Mm -hmm. So uh, before we wrap up though, let's just talk about the market uh, sure. because you know, it's ever expanding, but not everybody knows uh, what that market is and what kind of relationships can be developed. What would be your primary target should you uh, get through to production? Uh, where do you uh, foresee the market for this in the next couple of years? Yeah, it's a very interesting situation. We have over 71 factories, uh, lithium ion factories being built across the world today. That's so an amazing Those number. are under construction right now? Under construction. One, uh, one or two are operating right now, uh, providing batteries. The, the Nevada facility of Tesla is one of them. Um, very huge facility that can suck up a lot of graphite, a lot of lithium, a lot of uh, materials. Um, and, or, and respond to uh, an increasing requirement. Now just think of, uh, and I want people to think about mm -hmm. this, like your next car, mm -hmm. everyone's thinking, could it be electric? I think everyone's had that thought. And if everyone makes that decision, um, you're, you're getting more and more people <laughs> making that decision, you're going to have a huge spike in the sales of EVs uh, electric vehicles and a huge spike in the requirements for the materials needed to create the, the batteries. Mm -hmm. so, so that's where we're going. So with 71 new factories in production, is there enough supply at this point or will the demand be such that uh, it will drive up the price and make the whole process or this sector that much more attractive? Yeah, when you see that kind of demand coming into a small market like the graphite market which is about 150,000 tons of material. That 150,000 tons uh, can be chewed up by one factory. Wow. So we're gonna have to find a lot more material and produce this, but um, uh, we're gonna have to have a lot more mines. You can't uh, go out and find a mine and produce a million tons of graphite a year. It's just not possible. There's not enough. Um, you'd have to go through 10 million tons of material. That's a huge operation. Uh, what you need is many mines producing uh, graphite and that we want to be one of those mines so we think there's 15 or 20 new mines coming on stream in the next five years and we want to be one of them. Wow so the green economy is really going to rely on the resources of Mother Earth to be able to produce the kind of power and uh, electricity storage that we want. Yeah absolutely I mean you think back uh, to our history in uh, technological history in the last few years in 1980 no one had a computer Right. By 1990, everyone had one. 1990, no one had the internet. By 2000, everyone had one. And by 2000, in 2000, no one had uh, a smartphone or even a cellular phone at that point. And then it changed right. very quickly in 2010, 2015. What we're seeing is that opportunity right now in electric vehicles. We're going to see a massive change in the way people consume uh, automobiles. And we are right here as investors able to participate in it by creating those companies and those um, uh, opportunities in the stock market uh, like Lumico. Wow, it's a pretty exciting time. Thanks, Thanks for talking to you. Take care. All the best and uh, we'll look for further updates in the future from you. Sounds great. Okay, thanks. thanks.